Thank you, Maureen. Chris? Um, great. Well, um, thank you for inviting me to be part of this. In fact, I called up one of the organizers because I wanted to get the report from this, and instead of getting the report, I got asked to be on a panel. Um, and so what I'd like to do is share with you some of the thoughts that I've had today as I've listened to different speakers and the audience uh, conversation. And I, I was struck by what our, what our aim, I think, is, our fundamental aim, which came from Mark uh, Hallert. Hallert um, uh, and our aim is to be able to say to patients, when do you want to be seen? And do you want to be seen today? And if we can do that, I think we'll have achieved much of what we're after. And so as I thought about that fundamental question, I thought about, we talked a lot about supply and demand and, and matching supply and demand. And, and so we talked about uh, metrics to match supply and demand, third next available. We talked about some queuing theory. Uh, we talked about having a standardized template across a large organization. And we even talked about self-scheduling um, as ways to address that. We talked about ways to decrease demand uh, by converting some appointments over to virtual visits. Although I, I will tell you, I'm a little bit skeptical about that. There's some information that virtual visits add to the care, but they don't uh, replace visits. And so I think that they're an enhancement, uh, but they're not necessarily the solution. And then we talked a little bit about uh, increasing the supply side by having alternative providers. But as I was listening today, I just kind of felt almost this, this silence for the other pieces that we might think about in terms of increasing supply. So I wanted to share with you and with the committee some of those thoughts uh, around that. And my main thought is that it's not about the schedule. It's about the system. It's not about the way we move things around on the tabletop for how we schedule, although some of those things are really important and we want to do those also. But I think it's really about how do we build efficiency into the flow, some of the things you just mentioned, Maureen. Um, so I would include on that supply side Thinking about operations, we heard a little bit about that from ThetaCare, who's doing wonderful work around yeah. pre-visit lab. Um, also co-location, bringing the scheduler into the care team so that patients do get scheduled to meet their needs. Um, co-location of staff who work together, the medical assistant, the nurse, and the physician sitting close by to save time through the day. I, I think three to one staffing. I think we have grossly understaffed our highest trained resource. And therefore, we're not getting the most out of our resource. So our physicians, in, at least in primary care, are very often partnered with a half of a medical assistant. And therefore, our physicians are doing a lot of work that we really could do uh, as a team, but you can't have a team with a half of an MA. And I really believe that a three nurse to one physician ratio is the optimal ratio to achieve better care. I also think we need a three exam room to one physician, at least in primary care. If you're working out of one exam room, you're gonna have a lot of bottlenecks, and the bottleneck isn't gonna be your highest trained resource. Your bottleneck's going to be something else. Um, and then there are lots of issues around regulatory design, redesign that need to happen. You know, our, I think our aspirations and our rhetoric are for team-based care, but our policies and our technologies haven't yet caught up. So I wanted to just briefly tell you my story uh, of the last six years. I've had this profound experience of visiting over 50 practices across the country and spending the day uh, shadowing nurses and physicians as they do their work, including up at South Central Foundation. And the main observation that I would share with you is that I believe 70 to 80 percent of physician work output is waste. And by this, I do not mean waste of ordering tests that don't need to be done. I mean waste in effort, either by doing work that doesn't need to be done because it can be re-engineered out of the practice with better workflows, or waste that's related to the mismatch between technology and policy on the one hand and the needs of the patient and the care team on the other. But I'm hopeful because I think these are really solvable problems and we just need to start to pull together to, to do that. And so briefly, I also wanted to share with you one other mental model that has to do with this. And that is this concept of deconstructing the visit, right? Because one way we can add access is we can add more providers, or we can work later, or we can convert some appointments into virtual appointments, which might save us a little bit of time. But I, I want to take a minute and just deconstruct the office visit. 
And so I just put out all the activities that one might do in a visit, and I put some time notations by that. And if you add that up, for the physician, it may be 40 minutes of work for a particular office visit. They may not all happen at the visit. A lot of this is happening at night after the kids go to bed. But we can deconstruct this, and then we can share some of the care with other pe people in the team. We can do pre-visit lab, as they do at ThetaCare, to reduce a lot of post-visit work. We can entrust our nurses or medical assistants to do expanded rooming activities to take over some of those activities. We can even do some team documentation that someone mentioned earlier so that the physicians aren't spending uh, six to ten minutes per patient on typing. But by doing just those things, we've reduced the physician time for that visit from 40 minutes of work to 20 minutes of work. Well, the reason to do that isn't just to ram more patients through the system, but it's to give more breathing room for that relationship, to have more time in that doctor-physician component that's really gotten squeezed out, as, as you mentioned. And then it is to have a little bit more capacity so that we can see a few more patients a day, offer more patients <coughs> access. And then it's so our physicians aren't getting burned out by doing two or three hours of work every night at home. So we've talked a lot about Toyota, so I'm going to conclude with a couple of quotes. One from Toyota, a minute here, a minute there, and pretty soon you're talking real money. And I might convert that to, and pretty soon you're talking real access. And if we t say, this only takes you two more minutes, this only takes you three more minutes, and you add that up over 20 patients a day, you know, you're well over an hour, hour and a half of time, that, uh, that's a lot of access. This comes from the Society of General Internal Medicine back in 2007, uh, a blue ribbon panel report on the future of primary care. In few other sectors of the economy is the highest level professional responsible for the majority of production, customer service, and clerical work. There's a lot of capacity right there. There's a lot of scheduling solutions right there. And then finally, uh, one of my favorite quotes, going back to Sir William Osler, who in 1893 was quite prescient when he said, medical care must be provided with utmost efficiency. To do less is a disservice to those we treat and an injustice to those we might have treated. So thank you. Thank you very much. Chris.